Hi guys, it is an absolutely, and I am talking about a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times in paradise, at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this glorious, <clears throat> it is a Sunday morning, well, oops, I guess it is now a Sunday afternoon. That would be Sunday, August 11th, 2024, and uh, so I am, I am just going to relax today and uh, spend some time over on the mainstream media today, see what's on the minds of the mainstream media on this Sunday morning, and uh, we're going to start right here in the great state of New York with the New York Times Sunday paper. And uh, we're going to look at one article from this side of the pond. And then we're going, we're, we're going to look at two articles today. And you can uh, just decide for yourself why I decided to include them in the same rant. <coughs> we're going to start with this article from the Hamptons. I, I'm not even entirely sure what state the Hamptons are in. I think the Hamptons, are they in Massachusetts? Anyway, so this is what a home in the Hamptons looks like. And uh, so what is going on <coughs> in that home? here in the summer of 2024, according to the New York Times. How an Instagram perfect life in the Hamptons ended in tragedy. Yes, in the modern gilded age of New York. Oh, well, it is in New York. Just a, not, probably three hours east of here. In the modern gilded age of New York, where Instagram is awash in unrestrained displays of wealth, Brandon and Candace Miller were royalty at their 10th wedding anniversary Midsummer Night's Dream Party they celebrated with a few dozen friends in the backyard of their 5,500 square foot vacation home in the Hamptons. Beautiful women in gowns watched with their handsome husbands as the couple renewed their vows near a swimming pool strewn with peonies and rose petals beneath a canopy of lights. It was a grand public display of their perfect life and marriage. Candace Miller told a lifestyle blogger who wrote about the party that her husband's speech, quote, made me cry by the end with his authentic, raw emotion and romantic words. Yes. It all culminated in the kind of envy-inducing images anticipated by the roughly 80,000 followers of Mama and Tata, Candace Miller's popular Instagram feed, which featured a near constant stream of photographs and videos of her glittering life. The Midsummer Night Party was in 2019. Five years later, the glamorous image that Candace Miller cultivated and promoted has disappeared, replaced with heartbreak, anger, in a mountain of once secret debt. Her husband is gone. The home they so ostentatiously lived in, saddled by several mortgages, is not truly their own. Lawsuits from creditors, business bankruptcies, botched investments, and even a repossessed boat called Miller Time indicate that the wealth needed to maintain their lifestyle 
had evaporated, if it ever truly existed. Brandon Miller, at age 43, died July 3rd at a Southampton hospital. A suicide note indicated he had killed himself while his wife and children were on vacation on Italy's coast, according to a Suffolk County law enforcement official. Yes, he said Brandon Miller wrote, you know, in his suicide note, that a business deal he had hoped would ease the family's financial strain had collapsed. His family was stunned. When Candace Miller was contacted for comment, a family spokesperson said she and the children were overwhelmed by grief. Quote, Candace is devastated by the loss of her soulmate, and her two young daughters' lives are forever impacted by the loss of their beloved daddy. Yes. The Miller's downfall has become the focus of obsessive talk in the Hamptons and among internet sleuths who have scoured Candace Miller's social media presence for clues to what went wrong. That Miller's death occurred in the Hamptons during the height of the social season almost certainly has added to the intrigue. Yes, this is Neil Young, Neil Young, I guess another Neil Young, a historian who is writing a book about the Hamptons where he says the only thing as fascinating as opulent wealth is its sudden disintegration. Quote, this place is predicated for a certain set on showing off. It is the homes one has, the things one does out there, from the restaurants to the workouts to the parties. But it is a place where one can get overextended really quickly, where a house of cards can suddenly collapse. Yes. A chasm separated the Miller's shimmering public lives and painful private reality, but their fall is also a source of very real grief, a story about trying to have it all, and what happens when you cannot. And uh, that that is just the opening where the New York Times goes on and 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 on talking about this shit. You know, during their during their financial slide where they lost their Manhattan penthouse, they ended up renting renting a 4,382-square-foot, five-bedroom apartment on Park Avenue at $47 per month. They decorated with rented furniture for which they paid $180,000 to rent the furniture for one year. Yep. And $12,000 per month in addition to the $47,000 rent uh, after the first year. If this was downsizing, it wasn't enough. Then they talk about how they, you know, they lost the yacht, and they lost this, and they lost that. Good God, this story. 
uh, it's actually, I think this story in the New York Times is actually longer than, uh, than the Great Gatsby. And it, uh, <coughs> ends at this clueless fucking moron's <coughs> funeral in a graveside ceremony attended by family and a small circle of friends, he was laid to rest next to his father. The dismantling of their dream life began almost immediately. A mortgage lender sued Candace for $800,000 in missed payments and interest. Miller time was repossessed and the mama and tata Instagram account was pulled offline and we have uh, 1.6 thousand comments to this story. This is the comment from some fellow named Humpty Dumpty that amazingly did not get pulled down. Oh how my heart breaks for this tragic loss to the planet. I cried so hard, I ruined my bowl of stale oatmeal I salvaged from the food bank the very day this tragedy unfolded. So uh, if we did not get enough of our fill of tragedy, several versions of this story uh, this one from the French news service. We're going to go from the Hamptons to Uganda, where the death toll from Uganda rubbish dump collapse reaches 18. So, uh, here is the picture from uh, Uganda today. So let's see. We have the Hamptons and we have Uganda. Kampala, Uganda where I have actually been in my life. So what is going on in Uganda today? <clears throat> The death toll from a landslide at a vast garbage dump in the Ugandan capital of Kampala has risen to 18, police said this morning. Amid claims, the site was a disaster waiting to happen. Hmm. Local media said homes, people, and livestock were engulfed in mountains of garbage as the landfill in, <clears throat> in northern Kampala uh, after a collapse caused by heavy downpours. President Yoweri Museveni said he had directed the Army's special forces to help in the search and rescue operation and demanded to know who had allowed people to live near such a quote potentially hazardous and dangerous heap, close quote. <clears throat> Kampala's pol police spokesperson uh, Patrick Onyango said, uh, told reporters at the scene that 14 bodies were recovered on Saturday and another four you know, had been dug out of the garbage so far this morning. Uh, earlier, he had told AFP that an estimated 1,000 people were displaced and that the police were working to help those affected. Yes, I bet. Kampala Mayor Arias Lukwago said that, quote, many, many more people could be still buried in the heap as the rescue operation is ongoing. He described it as a national 
disaster accusing corrupt officials who have been siphoning off money that should have been used to maintain the landfill. Yes. He called for an investigation into how people were allowed to live so close to the site. Yes. Excavators were still churning through the huge mounds of garbage on Sunday as crowds of local residents looked on, some wailing in despair. Yeah, so this is the 36-acre Kitizi Landfill, which was established in 1996. Uh, that receives about 1,500 tons of waste every day. Quote, quoting the mayor, This is a disaster and was bound to happen as the landfill was full to capacity. Yes. There you go. So we have, instead of 1,600 comments, we have 38 comments uh, about the 18 and growing number of dead Ugandans getting buried in a, uh, in a garbage dump collapse. Uh, versus the 1,600 comments on some fake uh, multi-millionaire putting a bullet through his fucking head. And uh, I guess there was going to be a comment from uh, this fellow named Humpty Dumpty. Uh, but unfortunately, Humpty Dumpty's comment has been rejected by the Yahoo community as being, I guess, offensive. It had something to do with uh, they left a few words out of this headline which should have read, Death Toll from Uganda Rubbish Dump Collapse reaches 18 people who never should have been born. And I guess the Yahoo community uh, finds the truth offensive. Oh, Jesus. But uh, I'm just going to stake my claim here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. While I still can, and uh, get out there and enjoy this beautiful day in paradise while I still can, I, I think I might actually sneak down to that party two blocks from here. Because maybe I can sneak in without a $200 wristband and not get accosted by a hippie cop. Get out there and uh, dodge the hippie cops while you still can. Bye, guys.